Alright, so apparently some people have a little bit of confusion about the power scaling in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Mo daijoubu, nazete, watashi ga kita. We are about to talk about the most powerful stand. A stand so strong that no one could ever defeat it. And it's not Notorious B.I.G. because that stand is dumb, okay? It's just dumb. You know, when I want to get people interested in JoJo's, the first thing I tell them, the very first thing, is that they will never ever look at a transmission tower the same way again. Superfly, an automatic stand bound to an old pylon, is endowed with the ability to trap anyone who walks into it. Anyone who attempts to escape the pylon while trapped will begin to be covered in steel from its first ability, Occupant Restraint. But how exactly is metal plating done? Metal plating is the process that deposits one metal onto the conductive surface of another. Jewelry is often plated with gold or silver as a finishing layer to give it that extra shine. Through an electrochemical process, gold can be plated on top of copper wires as an electrically conductive protection against corrosion. Galvanizing is the process of coating any ferrous material with zinc to prevent corrosion, likely done in one of those high school chemistry experiment settings. God, I hated those. The process of metal plating includes boiling the base in a vat of chemical solvents to eliminate the oils on the surface, sandblasting with aluminum oxide powder to get it all coarse, and then putting it in a bath and shocking it with about 2 amps of current and 6 volts of pressure to get a nice, THICK coating. Using P equals IV, that being power is equal to current times voltage, every second of the average plating process needs about 12 watts of power. And since joules are watts per second, and to cover someone Joe's case height of about 180 centimeters, it would probably take around 3 hours. That means the amount of energy in this process would be 129,600 joules. And Superfly does that instantly. <laughs> Now obviously that would really hurt a lot, but what's significantly more dangerous is its second ability, Damage Reflection. Since the name obviously states what it does, I feel like I don't have to explain it. In Josuke's fight with Toyohiro, he and Okiasu beat the crap out of one of the support legs. This deals a ton of damage, but it still leaves the transmission tower standing. Your average double circuit tower can range anywhere from 25 meters tall to 60 meters tall. Using pixel measurements from the anime and adjusting for perspective, Superfly's height is approximately 58 meters tall, which means it weighs close to 25,000 tons. Because of the geometry and wanting to keep everything simple, that means each leg must be supporting 6,250 tons. Many double circuit towers are also made of 4340 alloy steel, galvanized low carbon manganese. The yeet, yeet, the yeet, the yeet, the yield strength of tubular 4340 alloy steel can be found in any metal guide sheet from structural engineering and is at about 45,000 psi or pounds per square inch. When Josuke and Okiasu unleash their rush of punches, Crazy Diamond Dora Doras at a rate of 45 punches per second, which was determined by counting the number of fists that hit Superfly in a 30 frame second. This goes by for 12.08 seconds, meaning that Superfly takes 543 punches from Josuke alone. Meanwhile, Okiasu is a bit slower with his punches only hitting Superfly 36 times a second, but he is taking brief moments to use Zahando to scrape away in what is truly an underappreciated amount of attention to detail that the animation studio David Production left in the show. This means Superfly is hit by Okiasu 434 times that means it was hit 977 times in total. 
As a good baseline, we are gonna use the moment when Crazy Diamond punches through Josuke's mom. Just for a good measure, you know? You know, that's a good amount of force. Skin's tensile strength, or strength before it breaks, is a measly 27 megapascals, while Bone's tensile strength is about 150 megapascals, where a pascal is force over area. Now since Josuke's mom is cleanly impaled, we'll use that as a minimum force for this scenario, because you can tell he's like actually trying. So what we'll do is take the area of the front of the fist as a rectangle, taking the average male size of a fist to be 0.05 meters wide by 0.085 meters long, the area of the fist would be 0.00425 meters squared. Now it's just basic math. 150 times 10 to the 6th is equal to some force x over 0.00425. This gives us a force of about 637,500 newtons per punch. Jeez. This dude is bad, and he ain't just fly. He's super fly, yeah, super fly. When it comes to women, they come to him, but it's still not enough. He wants a big score, a million in cash, yeah, the big one. Since one Newton is equal to 0.225 pounds of force, that means each punch has 143,438 pounds of force behind it. And to make things even a little bit simpler, we're gonna say that Okiyasu's punches are slightly weaker because he has a B in power instead of an A. So we'll clock his punches around 510,000 newtons, or 114,750 pounds of force per punch. If we consider one pascal is equal to 0 0.000145 psi, then Josuke hits the pylon with about half the 45,000 PSI needed to bend the 4340 alloy steel we're assuming Superfly is made of. <laughs> Taking the number of punches times the amount of force per punch, Josuke hits with 346,162,500 newtons over 12 seconds. Dividing this by the time period of 12 seconds means that he hits with 28,846,857 newtons every second. Using the same kind of calculation, Okiyasu hits with 18,445,000 newtons every second. As we discussed in the Killer Queen episode, a joule is one newton meter. Since the range of both Crazy Diamond and Zahando is two meters, then we'll take the total force determined by adding both to 47,291,875 newtons times the distance two meters. This means the total energy per second is 94,583,750 joules. That means the total energy is 12 times that at a heaven ascending 1,135,005,000 joules. And like, <laughs> that just comes right back at you. <laughs> It is just coming right back at you. And there you have it, the most powerful sand in JoJo's, hands down, about three times more powerful than Kira. You know, just epic, awesome stand. Now, some of you might be thinking, But Chucky, you said Kira could melt steel. That would mean Kira is stronger than Superfly. But Killer Queen could lose to Stray Cat. Who could lose to Lose to Shinobu? Who could lose to Kakyoin? Who could lose to Deal? Who could lose to Jotaro? Who could lose to Ringo? Who could lose to Gyro? Who could lose to Funny Valentine? Who could lose to Journey? So that's not a... That means Killer Queen exerts 350 million newtons of force with every explosion. Which coincidentally can melt around 4,500 pounds of steel. Oh my god! This guy, this, this guy, this guy, he's a big boy. You know, but he could maybe lose to Speedwagon, like we'd have to really consider that.
Hey everyone, thanks for watching. This episode took incredibly long to make because I'm learning new things along with you guys as I'm figuring out all the math behind this. I'd really appreciate it if you like, share, and subscribe so you can help me grow my channel. Have a beautiful duang, and I'll see you all next time.